This area, especially the, in the uh, ACF Basin or the Flint Basin, is once dominated by longleaf pine. And longleaf pine is a forest type that tends to use much less water than other forests. And so by restoring longleaf pine, we think we can actually help restore some of that stream flow in the Apalachicola Basin. So Georgia has been involved in the water wars for a number of decades with uh, uh, litigation between Florida, Alabama, and Georgia about flow. And a lot of the reason for that litigation is because flows have lowered. Some of that's due to climate change, some of that's due to the growth of Atlanta, and some of it's also due to agriculture. But I think a lot of it is also due to the way we manage forest. One of the things that I really appreciate about ecology is that you don't take one concept and run with it. You have to be aware that there are a lot of different things going on, not only in nature, but in the policy environment, within the natural environment. And you have to consider all those things before really making recommendations. So I think it's important to stay humble about individual findings. We can say all day that, you know, longleaf uses less water, but there's a lot more to the story for a landowner or for a policymaker to consider before they make a decision to just restore longleaf pine. So I do want people to realize that everything's connected and that we have an expectation that when we turn on our faucet, we're gonna get clean water and it's gonna be there consistently. There's more to the story than that, that having that water starts with respecting the environment, with respecting the land, and to understand what all goes into having that water coming from your faucet. So what fire does, fire maintains the longleaf pine uh, ecosystem, but it maintains it in such a way that is beneficial for water in almost every way. Fire helps control forest density, and forest density plays a, plays a huge role in uh, lowering water consumption. The more trees you have, the more water is lost to transpiration, and the less makes it in the streams. Fire controls the midstory, uh, and midstory can use a huge amount of water and fire helps maintain uh, native grasses, which tend to be much more water use efficient. And so fire controls the structure, controls the species, and ultimately controls how much water these forests use. Typical day for us, um, we use a lot of different instrumentation. Some of it's pretty complex, uh, like sap flow probes. We connect those to data loggers and we go out every couple of weeks and check them and download the data. But some of the other things we use are very simple, like uh, buckets, five gallon buckets are one of our bread and butter measurement instruments. And we use those to collect rainfall that's coming through the forest. And what we wanna know from that is how much rainfall is actually being intercepted by the leaves and the stems and the bark and the canopy. And that's, uh, if you think about that, that's sort of that first layer of resistance between rainfall coming in and how much of that water makes it into the stream. The impact of my work, I hope, is gonna help us come up with another reason and another mechanism where we can promote the restoration of longleaf pine. Everybody knows about the wildlife benefits of longleaf pine. Everybody knows about the aesthetics and the cultural value of the species. We're starting to understand a little bit more about the benefits of, of longleaf in terms of uh, it being a long-term carbon sink. So knowing that longleaf uses a lot less water just adds to that portfolio of benefits uh, about why people might restore longleaf pine.